exclusively on diet. Uh, the way that uh, the intelligence community and I typically uh, describe events that just say the last year is that Al Qaeda's capability and capacity has been diminished during that time, but without question, as it has shown in numerous occasions, uh, it retains uh, enormous capability. It adapts to uh, our operations. This is a thinking enemy. It may be barbaric at many times and deals, but this is an enemy that does think, it does adapt, and does adjust uh, to what we're going to do. This is why we have always said that our effort against Al Qaeda and other transnational extremist elements has to be sustained and has to be substantial. By the way, it takes a network to go after a network, and Al Qaeda is a network. And what we have seen, just to look at the, the area within Central Command, if you start in the east and work your way west, keep in mind, you know, I put just uh, up front that Central Command consists of 20 countries, uh, Pakistan in the east, Egypt in the west, Kazakhstan in the north, and the waters off Somalia uh, down in the south. If you look at in Pakistan, there has been significant pressure put on Al-Qaeda and on some of the other extremist elements operating in that country. The Pakistani military in particular has relied on an organization called uh, TTP, the Pakistani Taliban, and other than the NSM, an ally of that, and what's called the slot district in the northwest frontier province, uh, and then in the federal minister tribal areas of the border region between uh, Pakistan and Afghanistan. Uh, and they have carried out quite good operations. They have cleared on holding the gains that they have achieved, that their soldiers and their frontier war members in particular have fought so hard to achieve. Meanwhile, of course, there's been a considerable amount of pressure put on extremist leaders uh, in those areas. Uh, some of those are operations that we don't discuss, and I won't discuss here today, but the former director of the CIA and the Canadian office did indeed uh, open up a bit about the pressure that those were creating, and that was uh, prior to the pressure has been put on them throughout the course of the past year. Um, so again, generally progress uh, in that very, very important area because that is the nexus of uh, Al Qaeda senior leadership and some of the other extremist senior members. Afghanistan, on the other hand, we've seen uh, growth in the capacity of resurgence over the years that have continued throughout last year uh, by the Taliban, although we are seeing some uh, areas in which there has been progress uh, stemming from the additional uh, U.S. additional coalition forces and the gradual increase in the capabilities and capacity of Afghan forces. But what you saw yesterday was indeed uh, some of these extremist elements showing uh, the resilience and the degree of sophistication in carrying out simultaneous attacks against virus the targets of significant groups uh, to the uh, Afghan government. You also did see a substantial uh, and effective response out of both. In fact, you can address the response yesterday to the response of the last such attack like that of about a year or so ago, February 2009. Uh, it was, it was uh, impressive, but so was the uh, enemy uh, attack. So again, in Afghanistan in general, the, the downward trend uh, in terms of security, uh, if you move over to Iraq, uh, Al Qaeda in Iraq has been uh, sustained significant losses. That's the main reason why the level of violence in Iraq has gone down by well over 90% now from the spring of 2007. Put that in the numbers for you, say in May, June 2007, over 220 attacks per day. If you had Iraqi bad things, it would in some cases retroactively 220 attacks per day. Now it's generally well under 20, and recently it's been somewhere around 15 or so attacks per day. Again, Al Qaeda has shown an ability periodically to carry out horrific attacks. We saw some of those in early December. We saw them about two months prior to that as well, uh, and the two months prior to that. But overall, the levels of violence are vastly reduced, and that has enabled the reconstruction of infrastructure that was severely damaged. During decades, uh, but also during the uh, most violent periods of the insurgency uh, inside Iraq, the electrical towers not down, the bridge was blown up, uh, highways uh, with holes in them, and all the rest of it. And virtually all of that has now been repaired. Uh, and you see, in fact, even very substantial oil deals being consummated by the world's major uh, oil production and services companies, another one which just uh, signed yesterday. Uh, and so again, quite considerable 
progress there, lots of political dynamics and drama and emotion, especially in recent days, as someone might ask about. But again, South Thai and Milwaukee again. Progress. Saudi Arabia, very substantial progress over the course of the last five years, in particular, given that that country was really shaken by Al Qaeda. Uh, when about five years ago, our consulate in Jeddah was overrun, the oil fields were threatened, the Ministry of the Interior building was blown up, and so forth. So, very comprehensive campaigns have been carried out there, and generally positive uh, uh, trajectory in the Gulf states, uh, also in the Levant over into Egypt. Uh, with the exception now of moving back to the Arabian Peninsula again. Uh, a number of us have actually been watching Yemen for a couple of years since I was the commander of Raqqa, watching Yemen because we could see uh, roofs coming down. There was a jailbreak there in 2006 where a number of former detainees uh, escaped. They were the, the, the sea corn to reestablish Al Qaeda uh, in Yemen, and then last year it was franchised, if you will. Called out, labeled out by the Arabian Peninsula by uh, the Al Qaeda senior leadership in Western Pakistan. So that's the case where the situation is a downturn. And then you see across the uh, into Somalia uh, serious concerns there with Al Qaeda East Africa, even though the leader of Al Qaeda East Africa was killed uh, some months back. The fact that Yemen, if I could, uh, there have been encouraging uh, efforts by Yemen. Uh, this has been better part of a year's worth of effort. Um, you know, it was a secret visit back in July when I went to see President Saleh. Uh, there was released a month or so ago. Uh, and then I was in there, as you may know, on the 2nd of January as well. There were some good operations there. Uh, they clearly did not get all, by any means, all of the bad guys without the question. But they did disrupt, uh, did take out two training camps, uh, at least uh, one or more senior leaders uh, and that quite a disruptive effect, although again, clearly the uh, Christmas Day bomber uh, was already in motion uh, at that point in time, and without question uh, came out of the, the system there that was helping to train the wide explosives and so forth. But again, if you take it across the board, I think again, the intelligence community assessment that uh, probably was diminished in 2009 was accurate, uh, and that's you know, giving it a fairly lengthy answer. Why I think I agree with that particular assessment. Well, Iran has really grown at a serious concern in the region and now with the nuclear developments here. Share with us your thoughts about the real or perceived threat from Iran. Well, the interesting dynamic in Iran is that the best recruiting officer for the U.S. Central Command is Iranian President Ahmadinejad. Rhetoric, um, the actions of, of his country, uh, the continued funding, army training, equipping of Shia extremists uh, active in Iraq, though he said Allah, Hamas, uh, to a degree, uh, Taliban in Western Afghanistan, certain other places in the Gulf, uh, the continued uh, nuclear program uh, developments, missile testing, you name it. All of this has frankly scared a number of our partners on the Arabian Peninsula. And that has led to a much 